In this video, I will show you how I weathered the interior of the Mini. Hi there, you scale model kit lovers, and welcome in my super tiny shed. On the last vlog I started with weathering the interior and today I'm going to finish it. I'm also going to make a new gear lever, finalizing the dashboard, utilizing a new technique called fake chipping, adding quite some interesting 3D objects and using weathering techniques with oils and pigments. And keep watching until the end because I have a contest where you, yes you, can participate in the build of the Mini on a very, very tiny spot. So, let's get things rolling! Hobby, hobby. On the shift stick of the Mini, the mold lines are quite visible. Removing these from a part like this can be troublesome, mainly because of the curvy stick cover at the bottom. Scraping those off with a hobby knife is almost like going with a fingernail over a scoreboard. I learned you can remove mold lines with Tamiya Thin Cement too, as this will weaken them, although it takes patience. The next day I decided to get rid of the molded shift stick altogether and scratch build it myself. So I wasted a perfect knife blade for roll cutting a piece of solid brass rod, but it gives me a better cut than by using pliers. The original stick was cut off and I made a sticky bench of masking tape to prevent those small parts to roll off my bench. Cause everything always rolls off my bench. I drilled a 0.8mm hole in the shift stick cover and then the difficult part had to be drilled, the knob. I tried it for about 15 minutes and concluded it could not be done. This is a bit tough. <laughs> so why not scratch build the knob too? A piece of evergreen rod to the rescue and after roll cutting it I drilled a hole in the center of it. Then I made the tapered shape by first cutting tiny pieces off it and then kept on sanding it until it started to look like a decent shift stick knob. When this was done I had to try it. The brass stick was primed with Mr. Metal Primer and then a coat of dark rust was applied as I wanted it to look a bit shabby as the rest of the car. The cover and the knob were done in dark grey. And you know my standpoint on using black paint by now if you have seen my last video. The cover got some highlights by dry brushing it to make the layer stand out more. At the end I did some acrobatics as I felt like it. Paint the 8 shift pattern on the knob. That was really fun to do. Robbie, Robbie. The dashboard of any car is a piece loaded with details and the one in the Mini is no exception. Some modelers may dislike painting details by brush but to me it's a mindful occupation. Especially painting those chrome trims around the gauges is something that needs your total attention. Vallejo Chrome from the Model Air series is really the best paint to do this. It has just the right viscosity and covers the edges in one go. And I like the sheen of it very much too. This is why I don't use black paint when it's called out in the instructions. It gives me an opportunity to add shadows with a wash. Paint was scraped away to maximize the bond of the lower part of the dash later on. The rev gauge is a separate part and I painted it on a backward folded piece of masking tape held by a crocodile clamp. Decals always have a carrier, that transparent film that goes beyond the design of it. Since the gauges are a little bit sunken, the carrier film can't stand in the way of a proper application. So I slammed them with a hollow pipe in order to remove that excess film. Using lukewarm water for soaking the decals is best and I use a coffee cup warmer for this. Microscale set prior to applying and so after help to glue the decal in place and make it conform to its surface. The application on the rev gauge goes just like that. If the decal cooperates. <laughs> it's on my thumb. Uh -oh. I add a thin coat of varnish to the decals to give the gauges an appearance of having glass in front of them. When all gauges are set, it just makes the dash come alive. 
the underside of the dashboard has quite some intricate details that need to be hand painted. Underneath the button bar I add a fake shadow just to give it some depth. The ventilation unit got sprayed since it is quite large. With mounting the underside on the upper piece the dash was done, but not dusted. This is a paint technique I learned from Night Shift, the awesome armor modeler and YouTuber, and I call it fake chipping, as no real chipping is involved. You paint dots and scratches on places where you expect damage. First start with a lighter color than the base color. In my case it could assimilate primer paint. Don't be afraid, just apply some dots in random and sometimes very <laughs> random ways. Oh well, that's spontaneous. The good stuff comes later. I admit you need some fine motoring skills to get this done. I use Vallejo Dark Rust to paint pupils on the spot. <laughs> they look like eyes. When you do this you'll immediately see that your efforts come alive. Suddenly those spots look like chips. I think it is a nice and, at least for me, easy way to add a more damaged look to parts which look too pristine at first. I even added white surroundings to earlier made real chips done with the chipping medium method. This requires a steady hand too, but results are there right away. The door panel that was painted in emerald green metallic, you know, the obligatory door in another color, had a mistake. The outer segments of this part should be in the body color. I sanded them and painted them by brush. By brush? Yes. It was too much for me to build up my complete spray booth lineup as it takes so much time in my super tiny shed. And this is a part that will not be very close to the eye. UK Azure from the Model Air series is a nice paint to use with a brush, but gloss varnish isn't. This leaves brush strokes easily. So next time I need to use something else. The door panel got its fake chipping treatment too and I must say it's a fun thing to do. Most of the time it is hard to get a model look real and not like a toy. But by using this method on your scale motor car rack you get authentic results with minimal effort. And for sure you'll get better at it along the way. So just give it a try. Finally the last part needed fake chipping, the pedals. After the pads were painted in black grey, I took my Tamiya makeup set and applied a bit of silver to get this fresh bare metal look. Oh and the gas pedal is bare metal too of course. I wanted the Mini to be a mess on the inside as well and that's why I designed and printed loads of objects, including books. Because why scratch build books when you can design and print them? Two of them are actual books I own. What's that all about? Autocourse is a Formula 1 annual and it exists since the beginning of the 50s, the very early stages of Formula 1 itself. And I own 49 copies here and here. And the oldest one I've got is from 1961, the year that Phil Hill won in his Ferrari Sharknose. And the latest one I own is with Lewis Hamilton and his 7th world championship. I chose the annual of 1992 to reproduce in 1 in 24 scale, because this is a book a British F1 fan would possess, because of Nigel Mansell who won it. After all the Mini is fictitiously located in Birmingham and he's a Brummy, isn't that a coincidence? The other auto course is from 1978, the year that the admirable Mario Andretti won the championship. And look! It is even signed by him. Out from the spray booth I painted the edges of the 1992 annual green, as the original is. Decals were self-made and applied with the help of softeners. The 1978 version has blue canvas and after the decal is put on you have a nice dollhouse book. While I got the hang of it I produced another legendary book, the Haynes Manual of the Mini Mark I. That will sit nicely in the dashboard. The next object is a canister with a sinister edge to it, because it can't be all too happy, can it? This is supposed to be a can filled with hydrochloric acid and it will sit in the interior of the Mini to dissolve problems. <laughs>
Barbie. Finally, I am at the stage of gluing ready-made parts into the interior. I wanted to add floor mats since they are missing in this kit, so I scratch built them from evergreen plastic card following research photos I had. The floor mat on the driver's side was given some extra wear to make it look used. I scraped away the micro balloons on the spot where I wanted to make a proper bond between this part and the floor. Now the exciting part starts. Dusting up the interior with oils. In fact, it's not stressful at all. Although you can't see an immediate result after application, it needs to dry for a few hours. What makes it relaxing is that you have much more time to adjust application than with acrylics. Just use a bit of thinner if you want it to look less dusty or add more oil paints if you want more. Note that I use a different brush here than I did in the previous video of the red chair of the Mini. On the chair I wanted streaks, so I chose a brush that is a bit sturdy. Here I wanted the oil paint, the dust, to be more soft and spread out, hence the softer brush. My smaller Raphael brush is used for delicate application in harder to reach places. Of course the furniture needs dust treatment too and I thought masking off a part of the back seat would look nice, but it disappointed me later on. Feathering the oil paint is the biggest challenge you have. It is a matter of practice, a game of give and take between the oil paint and the thinner until you are satisfied. After all, you have several hours to adjust the look of it since it takes quite some time to dry. The dashboard couldn't do without dust too and honestly I was a bit nervous before doing so. But it turned out great. The edges of the rails for the removed chair, the one of the last video, were given a metal sheen using a pencil. I wanted to have some mud residue in the foot wells and I chose pigments to do this job. Pigments are a lot harder to work with than oils. They are difficult to apply in the amount you want. I tried to fix them by dropping binder on them using a pipette, but this gave bubbles and is a nasty way of application. No. Summarized, shoot, don't do this. So by doing I learned the hard way. That's way too much. Having a bit of control on the application is done by using the Mr. Hobby applicator as a shovel and the brush as a brush to wipe it in the desired places. This too is a game of applying pigments and binder in quantities until you are satisfied. And keep in mind that applying pigments is never fully controllable, at least I didn't manage to. So allow a bit of randomness in this. It was time to mount the pedal set and the handbrake lever in place before moving further. The wheel wells are way too clean, that desperately needs some dirt. I used this acrylic mud for this. It has a good texture and workability and it dries pretty quick. I'd say around 4 to 6 hours depending on how thick you apply it. But the color is outright awful. This is supposed to be a European mud but it looks like stiffened vomit. I don't know which muddy grounds in Europe Vallejo took for reference for this product, but it is an awkward color. So I repainted it later on in the process, after it had dried. When the oils were dry, I removed the masking tape. As I said, I wasn't too happy with the results on the seat, as oil ran under it. On the partial shelf it's much better. Finally I can glue in some stuff and see my ideas about the interior become a reality. In 2017 I was busy building, or racking actually, of the Italerie for Transit. It is not finished yet, but during that build I designed these boxes. And one of those would be a welcome prop to sit on the seat. Exactly, that spot that had a unhappy masking. I dirtified the box with toothpaste and glued it in place with PVA glue. Gluing objects in place that you worked on for a long time is a happy process. It gave me a thrill to see the different items come together. This is a fun pack of plastic soda bottles I worked on before. It contains really funny decals with parody labels of real soda pop brands. So I should have an easy time getting a bottle <laughs> finished as it only needed a label. This is kind of a tough job since the decal is a bit sturdy. Maybe a bit of salt can help me out. Oh my. Eventually it worked out with some gentle care. A jolly color for the cap and mounting it on the seat. 
Adding some real life nature objects is a lot of fun and why not in the interior? This sponge has the right scale and I use it to punch leaves from real leaves. When punching at the exact spot where a vein runs, you can make it look like the leaf has a stem. Since I use a bone dry leaf of an American oak, yes Americans, we didn't only import your burgers, the color of the mini leaf is always correct. Adding the leaves in the interior is like putting the icing on the cake, it just looks so cute. And it adds a heap of realism. A little bit of PVA glue is enough to bond them on the floor pan. I mounted the dashboard and the steering column. Then I put the gear stick in place since I had the space now. Because after this the trophy like steering wheel had to be mated with the column. It looks way too shiny compared to the rest of course, but my heart bleeds a little having to dust it up. First I painted the mud in the wheel wells as it has dried up. And to buy me time to gain some nerve to dust up the steering wheel. I gave the dirt a wash and a bit of dry brushing. Then it was the steering wheel's turn. I showed no mercy and blobbed it. But then carefully tried to adjust the amount of paint in order not to block all my painstaking wood paint work. Other items in the car were dusted up too, but not all of them as they have to look like they are recently used. I gave the edges on the front seat a dirtier look on places where hands would repeatedly touch it. And you wonder what's in the box? Could only be filled with this, couldn't it? I have a very special contest for you scale model kit lovers, it's called the bumper sticker bout. And what's that all about? Well, I am planning on adding stickers on the rear window of the Mini. Very tiny stickers that is. And one of them of course will be the sticker of the Hobby Robby. But there's room for more. So what kind of sticker would you want to have on the back of the Mini? So leave a comment below the video with what kind of sticker you would like to see on the car. And maybe I will add it in the next vlog. And I will name you if I pick you. I have room for about two participants, so leave your comment below the video before next Friday and don't forget, don't be sobby, build a car model kit and watch Hobby Robbie.